Welcome to Superhero News. Oh, shit, my Adam, are we out. live already? It is June seventh, oh Wednesday. God, yeah. This is our twentieth episode of Superhero News. Thank you for joining Woo. us. 20, you guys. Cheers, Cheers to, 20. to twenty. Didn't we just hit a milestone on our subscribers? I believe yes, we, we are did. over nine thousand. Like Vegeta. Ah. Yeah. I think that for our twentieth episode, we should finally let our studio audience that is in here every week say, "Woo!" Say something, guys. <laughs> They're really here. <laughs> Naeem's fired. They're real people. We brought you here for a reason. <laughs> They're real people. <laughs> wow. How are you guys doing? Great. Thank you guys, by the yeah. way, studio audience, for being silent for 19 episodes. We really appreciate it. <laughs> really good commitment. <coughs> and now really, good com really good home improvement growl. <laughs> thanks, thanks. It's weird. So uh, before we get started, we have a little bit of house cleaning to do or housekeeping. Oh, yeah. Hector, you have officially moved on to the top three for the DC All Access Correspondent Search. Stop the intro. Stop the intro. What's going Intro's on? Intro's on loop. How's that? Is that? Does that mean that we've just been hey, looping hey, the intro? We've been hey, looping hey, and hollering hey. for no reason. <laughs> we've been whooping for like 20 minutes. Wait, so. and could they only hear us but not see us? No, they could see us. Oh, but they could also they could hear see us and hear us. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So <laughs> Sorry, yeah, guys. I, Thanks, Shane. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm, Shane. I, I am in the, the top three for DC All Access. Search for a Comic-Con correspondent. Wish me luck, guys. Uh, <laughs> I got my challenge. Uh, the video is going to be up tomorrow. I'll post it, mm -hmm, YouTube, mm -hmm. before 3 p.m. For this week's challenge, and hopefully I get in the top two, and yeah, we'll see. I think so, you will. I zing, think you will. zing, zing, um, zing, zing. I think you zing. have a handle on this competition, Hector. Thanks, dude. Uh, I don't want to be biased. I'm but having I think a blast. Kick I'm ass. Having, I, can I just say, real quick? <laughs> what? I know. Like I, how quick? I haven't won anything, but I would like to thank Adam Lavick for all of his incredible editing work, camera Aww. work. He's my go-to guy. He's my director. Thanks, Peanut. He's my rock. And I. <laughs> don't worry, Hector. I love you too, <laughs> pumpkin. The wind beneath my wings. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I said it wasn't going to cry. <laughs> Your hair is wet. It's gelled. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> we got fancy oh, up in this show, y'all. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's guys. It. First, first, thing, first bit of news. We've officially got a uh, confirmation who's going to direct the Gambit movie. Mon Cherie. Mm -hmm. Mon Cherie is going to be a Rupert Wyatt who directed the Planet of the Apes movie. Rise of the Planet the rise of the Apes. Of the Apes. Yeah. Apes. Not yeah. Dawn, not to be confused with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn? Dawn? Which was Dawn. a really good film. Uh, How do you feel about this news, Hector? Tell uh, me. Tell me. What else did uh, Rupert Wyatt direct? He, he directed I, another film. I looked up his IMDb. It's nothing major. It's yeah. this really and one huge. other. Uh, what was the. Like, there was one of the movie After Rise that he directed. Well, no. I didn't get a chance to see No, it. no Matt, Reeves, Matt Reeves directed Dawn of the Planet no, of the Apes. No, I'm saying, what, uh, what else did uh, Wyatt direct? In any case, sure. There was nothing that was super attention grabbing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think he's a fine director. I think that Rise, when you compare it even to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, directed by Matt Reeves, it's very like methodical and, and not necessarily slow, but like precise. Mm -hmm. Like it mm -hmm. takes its time. And right. I don't necessarily see that as like uh, completely a perfect match for the character of Gambit. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? He's like, kind of a rogue. Gambit's yeah. a rogue. He's rough around the edges. Yeah. He's you know. So I would think something like a Louis Leterrier, who directed The Incredible Hulk, who directed mm -hmm. Jet Li in the film Unleashed, mm -hmm. would be kind of uh, more appropriate for. And even Louis, he's uh, French, and uh, right. you oh, know, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, as we know, Gambit is from um, the Bayou. Got a little bit of the <laughs> French, <laughs> the French Quarter yep. in there. Yep. Um, so that was a terrible yeah, I don't know it's what okay. just happened. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little okay. Bobby Boucher. Yeah, uh, yeah, a little Bobby. <laughs> you know, my mama said, 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 he might because yeah. this is Channing Tatum we're talking about. I mean, I think I think it's a very uh, it's an obvious choice for a few reasons. First of all, he did Planet of the Apes, and that movie mm -hmm. was so well received critically. Mm -hmm. Financially, mm -hmm. it wasn't a huge success, but mm -hmm. it over time accumulated a really good, you know, yeah. a really good, really good traction. Yeah. So. I think I think it makes sense to keep this director at Fox to work on other properties, develop mm -hmm. other superhero movies. And Channing like Tatum that. even mm -hmm. said he did a he did a Reddit AMA today. Oh, he did. And yeah. one of the things that he said was, you know, Gambit's not really a well known character to the mainstream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need a Comic director. Fans know him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You need a director. You need somebody who really understands the character, who can really do a good job telling the audience or explaining to the audience who he is and why he exists in this universe and what his purpose is. And I think Rupert Wyatt's a really great person to do that. Great. Yeah. 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 yeah, I would agree. I agree with all that. I mean, he's he doesn't really have the track record to prove it at this point, but I'm willing to give him a chance. Absolutely. Um, I, yeah. I believe he did well with Rise, so let's see him here's, see what here's, he's got. Here's what I'm excited about, too. You, you reminded me that uh, Gambit is at Fox. 
Mm -hmm. 20th Century Fox, and Planet of the Apes is a Fox franchise. So, like, I like when the studios, they're cultivating this talent, you know? Mm -hmm. They didn't just brush him aside. Like, they're they're bringing him on another project, and I think think that this is going to be... Uh, I think he'll be a better director in this than he even was on Planet of the Apes. Like, oh, yeah. I, think I hope that, so. Because I'm mean, sure he's learned so much exactly. about making I mean, that's the movie. The, that's exactly. the point, right? You exactly. get experience and then you do better as you so, go. It's great. I like that. I say keep your talent in-house. Be a good boss. Fox is being good bosses right now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense because, I mean, other studios are doing the same thing. They're keeping yeah. mm-hmm. good filmmakers, good writers that they've used on other projects that are successful and putting right. them on these superhero franchises. Right. I, I like this choice because so far everything they've, that they've done with the X-Men has been fantastic from Days of Future Past on. Yep. So let's let's trust that they're cultivating the right talent. Mm. You know, it's not just mm-hmm. keep the people in house, it's the right people in house. Exactly. I would say since first class on. Because I count first class, the Wolverine, Days of Future Oh yeah, I'm sorry, past. first class. That's what yeah. I mean. Yes, yes. Solid, solid, yes. solid, solid. Since first class. Yep. Luban Solid. Moving on to the next bit of news, we got a little bit of casting mm. for Star Wars Rogue One, the first anthology movie that's going to be directed by Gareth Edwards. And we are getting word, this was coming from Variety, that Forrest Whitaker is in negotiations to join the cast of Star Wars Rogue One. They wow. didn't specify yeah. what character, oh, yeah. whether he's going to be a rebel or an imperial. My guess is he could go either way, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think he could be a great oh villain. God. I think he could be a great hero. What do you think about this, Augie? Dude, I'm really excited about this. Forrest Whitaker is one of the most solid actors of the last 20 years. Yeah. Like, he's fantastic. Yep. And every single casting choice and directing choice that they've made for this movie gets me so excited for this because it's clear that they know what they're doing. They know exactly where they want to go. And it just that's what I like to see, that that people really have the passion for what they're doing. They mm-hmm. want an actor like Forrest Whitaker. And to me, one of the most exciting things was Diego Luna being brought on as well. Yes. Because yes. Diego Luna's got some huge cred. Yeah. But Forrest Whitaker, just cherry yeah. on top. It's, gonna it's a very great. diverse cast. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. Uh, we don't know what the character is. What I'm excited again is that just the caliber of actors that they're bringing on to bring mm-hmm. these new characters to life. You know, when the original Star Wars came out, uh, those films came out. Uh, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, uh, Harrison Ford were relative unknowns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the those roles shot them into superstardom. And what's cool is that they're smart and that they're introducing us to new characters. Mm-hmm. I'm just excited because this anthology series means again new characters that we don't. Mm-hmm. We even watching the trailer with Harrison Ford coming out saying Chewie, we're home. We've got some <laughs> expectations. We've got we because it's Han Solo. Like we know those yeah. characters so well yeah. mm-hmm. that it, it, the new Star Wars film Episode Seven is very wisely also bringing in new characters mm-hmm. because otherwise. Otherwise, it would just be expectations, expectations, right. expectations until they're not met. Yeah, exactly. And, and exactly. Anthology is going to bring in new characters, but they're bringing this incredible cast uh, with Felicity Jones as mm-hmm. the lead. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love her. <laughs> ben Mendelsohn, Diego cool. Luna. Ben Mendelsohn, cool. yeah. Diego Luna, and now Forrest Whitaker is either, like yeah. you said, a good guy or a bad guy. Either one is amazing. Yeah, yeah exactly. He could, he could like, knock it out of park. Absolutely. I, oh, my God. Last King of Scotland. Have you guys seen Last King yes. of Scotland? No, I have James not McAvoy. He yeah. plays uh, this incredible, like, villainous type real person yeah. just Forrest Whitaker just nails it but then like so many movies where he's been the good guy yeah where he's like oh, I love him like no yeah. he died he's like, like so vulnerable at the yeah. same time he's, he's yes. strong exactly. and so, oh, yeah. my, he has a, he has a presence eyes. I think it's a really his strong eyes, presence dude, his eyes are just insane he just, acts phenomenal well, plus his, yeah you, it's funny you mentioned that because his eyes you either look at that character and you feel very sorry for him or you want to you know you, there's something about him, yeah, yeah, or you're terrified yeah, of him. Yeah. Yeah. Such a presence. So mm-hmm. I'm stoked about the whole thing, but I like how they're getting um, like high caliber actors to introduce yeah. us to new characters. You know what? The script must be pretty kick ass too if they're getting this kind of these Absolutely. people. We at least you know? know what the that the story's kick ass. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. we at least know that because it, it, it all originated from uh, one of the guys working at Lucasfilm. John Knoll. John Knoll, who yeah. was at Lucasfilm, and he had yeah, this he's idea. he's one of the heads of ILM. And mm-hmm. one of the heads of ILM, and he was told, "You got to pitch this." You got how we doing? Everything okay? <laughs> I'm just looking at you, and it, I know it's what's, all funked. What's yeah, the beer, bro? What funked. is the beer? The beer third is shift. Third shift. Amber Lager. Band of Brewers. Feels like the third shift right now. Tell you what. <laughs> long, it's been a day. long day. Ooh, long E3. Day. Yikes. Yay! 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 <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> all right, moving right along. Moving yeah. right along. We got oh, uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Here's what I want to do for this, guys. It's not I my want rodeo. to. Practice the pronunciation of this fantastic actor's name, and do I it. want us all to get it perfect. I want us all to do it. I feel like I never want I to mispronounce it. his name for the rest of my life. Chiwetel? Am I already wrong? Chiwetel? 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 Chiwetel. Pronounce the Chiwetel. Ch- pronounce the chair, brother. Well, listen, I'm Mexican. We, we confuse our pronounce chairs with our shares. Shares in the chair. Yeah. Chiwetel Ijafor. Yeah. Chiwetel Ijafor. I love Chiwetel Ijafor. Chiwetel Ijafor is going to be in Doctor Strange. It was confirmed. 
He's in the cast, mm -hmm. and he's playing a very exciting character. The uh, arch enemy, you can go to the next slide, the arch enemy <laughs> of Benedict's character, obviously Stephen Strange. Mm -hmm. We don't know if he's American or British, but Chiwetel Iwafor. Edge of four. Edge of four. Chiwetel. Chiwetel. You were so close. Damn Chiwetel it. You Edgefort. Match. Chiwetel Ejiofor is playing a character named uh, Baron Mordo. Baron Mordo. Yeah. Baron Carl with a K. Do Mordo. You know, do you know about Baron? Mordo? A little bit. Just a Hector? quick background, guys. Baron Mordo was uh, a former uh, a apprentice or trainee mm -hmm. of the Ancient One, mm -hmm. who in the film is rumored to be played by Tilda Swinton, mm -hmm. but in the comic books is an ancient. Tibetan guy yep. who is this old, old, old Tibetan uh, Asian man who is thousands of years old, but he's a human, yep. but he's a couple thousand years old because he has like, you know, he's the ancient one. He is the, he is the sorcerer supreme on earth yep. and he's mastered mysticism and magic to where he can slow down his aging. And so he passes this on. Baron Mordo was the first uh, guy, just like Count Dooku was trained by Yoda mm -hmm. and then Count Dooku and Star Wars went bad. That's who Baron Mordo is. Yeah. He went bad. And in fact, in the early Dr. Strange comics, he was being trained at the same time as Doctor Strange mm -hmm. by the Ancient One, and they were both kind of in contention for the role of Sorcerer Supreme. Mm -hmm. And Baron Mordo, I think, kills the Ancient no, One. No, Baron Mordo. So the sort the uh, Ancient One tries figures out that Baron Mordo is trying to kill him. Correct. And he brings on Doctor Strange, Strange, Stephen Strange, yes. to help protect him. And then yes, it all and, goes and, down. And and I think even the Ancient One like kind of allows it to happen, even exactly. like because he's so smart and so wise and everything. Right. Just great. Right. He's like a great mentor character. Right. Uh, in terms of like storytelling, you want to talk about good mentors? The ancient One's like the ultimate mentor because he's like, the Ancient One. In, in like the in like the hero's <laughs> journey type of yeah. thing. Yeah. So Baron Mordo kills him, and Baron Mordo. Uh, uh, ends up uh, being a thorn in Doctor Strange's side for the rest of his life. He yeah. is somebody who is allied with Dormammu, mm -hmm. the oh, ruler yeah. of the Dark Dimension, mm -hmm. the dread ruler of the Dark Dimension. So he has summoned Dormammu to the Earthly Plane multiple times. And he's just a human, but he's basically Doctor Strange, but evil. Yeah. That's basically yeah. who he is. I don't know what you just said. Come on. He, <laughs> is. <laughs> he is. He's basically the exact... If you have an evil twin, yeah. that's who that's yeah. who this guy is. Yeah. Although he's, I uh, would say that Doctor Strange's arch enemy is actually Dormammu. Uh, in the same way that like mm -hmm. Luke has Darth Vader, but then really the enemy is the Emperor. Right. Dormammu's right. like the Emperor. Like Dormammu's mm -hmm. like the most evil. He's like the devil. Like he's from another dimension. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He wants to take over everything, rule over everything. He's from the dark dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Baron Mordo is like uh, his um, equal. Is Doctor mm -hmm. Strange's equal? Because right. they're both humans and they both use magic and they throw up their hands like this and stuff. <laughs> do weird things. And do this is the only thing they do. But <laughs> spells in comics stuff. they do a bunch of other. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. So, I remember when Chiwetel Ejiofor was being considered for, nice or at least like he was being rumored for a lot of different roles. Yeah, in the including MCU, Doctor Strange, inc including Doctor Strange, and including Black Panther. Yeah. I had originally really wanted him for Black Panther, mm -hmm. but when they once they went with Chadwick Boseman, I thought, okay, well, there's got to be a role that Chiwetel Ejiofor can play in the MCU. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm not familiar about this character, but yeah. to have Benedict Cumberbatch and Chiwetel Ejiofor and maybe Tilda, Sw Tilda Swint. Solid yep. cast. Tilda Swint, Tilda Swint, Swint baby. Yeah. Swint Swint Swint. I, I think, I mean, this movie could, <laughs> just the cast alone, it could be really, really, really yes. good. Yeah. As is, long as the direction and the writing is solid, you, you're not going to go wrong with this, this movie. This is just like I talked about the Star Wars one. Yeah. This casting, these casting decisions have been so solid that yeah. I feel like this is going to be a great movie. Yeah. This might be another breakout hit. Not as, not as good as Guardians, but it might... You know, have people thinking in another direction. That's when it comes absolutely to the what's going to Cinematic happen. Universe. That's absolutely what's going to happen because the whole point of this movie being made, Kevin Feige has said multiple times, we want to show the audience something they haven't seen. Exactly. And even though it's a Marvel movie and people think they know what Marvel is, mm -hmm. this is a corner that hasn't been explored. It's going to be magic. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bunch of cool special effects stuff that we haven't seen. Right. How are they using magic? How are they fighting? What does the villains look like? What do the heroes look like? What is the story like? Mm -hmm. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm most excited about is, again, the way that Guardians of the Galaxy was this comedic space opera. Mm -hmm. yeah. People were like, oh, that's in the same world as Iron Man? Mm -hmm. I thought it was all just the same cardboard cookie no, cutter like no. factory produced Marvel movies. Yeah. You've got Guardians. You're going to have um, Ant-Man is going to be a different vibe uh -huh. that was yeah. different from yeah. Avengers Age of Ultron which is now the standby sort of Marvel mm -hmm. thing. Yep. Doctor Strange is going to do the same thing. Black Panther is going to do that. Yeah, Captain Marvel is going to do yeah. that. Yeah. Like, you know, Definitely. when they get to Inhumans it's going to be like, what? And I think the MCU needs yeah. to go in that direction. I think, you know, we've spent for Phase 1 and most of Phase mm -hmm. 2 we've spent, you know, pl playing with really earthbound rules. Yeah. You know, with some liberties, sure. obviously. They were really sure. smart in doing this. They built such a strong backbone with Avengers mm -hmm. and everything that they yeah. could just branch off in any direction at this point. Yeah. The culmination being with Thanos, you know, and the right. Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Um, and now at this Which, point, they really have the freedom to do whatever they want. By the way, just reread Infinity Gauntlet. It's incredible, Very right? excited. Oh my <laughs> God. Very excited. I don't know how they're going to do it. 
very excited I, about that movie. Yes. Like it's so oh, good. I don't know I have how they're going to do this movie. I have thoughts. I have Adam, ideas. I have to, ideas. You need to yeah, yeah, catch yeah. up on it. See, this so is the thing. Talk about this it. is the thing that I've, that I've always like, <clears throat> talked about about these movies. Is like I hate reading the material before because I want to go into the movie not knowing the context. No, 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 no. no. But you have to no. read because they can't do what they did in the comic book because right. they don't have the rights to all the characters. Right, exactly. right. Exactly. Especially so Marvel. Be but, different. but listen, but you say that, but don't you get more tingles in your jingles when you see trailers? I get tingles in my jingles when I see you. But hey, buddy, <laughs> my tralala, my ding ding dong. You see the trailer for Batman v Superman, and you recognize it from the Dark Knight Returns, and you're like, oh, but I had yeah. already read that a right. long time ago. But what That's if you a, ha- yeah. what if you had already read that Infinity Gauntlet tomorrow, mm-hmm. and then in two years we're gonna get a trailer for? Oh, Avengers I'm sure would have been War super excited. One. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, you know, like it's it to me, it's like this. I feel like um, I'm I'm that way with books, mm-hmm. but with comic books, I'm different. I love to read the because they can't adapt it verbatim. Right. I read exactly. the I read the Kingsman before we went to go see the Kingsman, mm-hmm. and kind of helped me enjoy it more. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, to read Kick Ass. Before right. you go mm-hmm. see the movie, and to, um, yeah, because because of the visual aspect, I don't know a bunch of different reasons, but yeah, man, it's I, so I got Can ideas. You but, just just to sort of get like the yeah. backbone, the chronology. I just realized I have the exact same shirt hanging in my closet. Do you really? Oh my gosh. Sorry, it's such a tangent. Focus, <laughs> focus, guys. Shirt. It's a sexy time shirt. Ooh, Tamano, guys, you got to focus here. Come <laughs> Sorry. on, we got a lot Sorry. of superhero <laughs> news to deliver. <laughs> well, we only have one more topic to That's talk true. about. That's really, true. yeah. And br- speaking of the next topic is going to be Ant Man. Has some awesome new posters out yeah. coming out, and he is on top Ugh. of the Avengers and their weapons, which is really really cool. No shield, uh, no there's hammer. The, there's no the problem. shield. There's Cap uh, Ant Man on the shield. There is uh, no shield. Ant-Man. No armor. No problem. <laughs> I love these. I got to read them out loud. Gosh. There's Ant Man on Iron Man. Yeah. And then what's the next one? We got Ant Man on. Um, no shield. On the no floor. hammer. No problem. <laughs> ant-man <laughs> it's perfect are you really excited for this movie Hector? dude i'm super excited and i saw the first yeah. poster i saw was just the captain america poster the shield one uh-huh. and i went oh that's pretty cool but then i saw the other two and i'm yeah. like oh, i want all three of them like hanging well, yeah. in a series of like They're these are my really, really cool posters. i think so this great. is a good departure from the crappy other like remember when we saw the age of ultron one listen yeah. that's oh, a that's just a so bad that, and even the first was bad yeah. it's just yeah. photoshop it's just all the all hero shots and it's all fake and it's all photoshop um this poster is really these bad. posters are fun and mm-hmm. i think that's the biggest thing with these movies is you want it to feel fun you want to know you're going yeah. into ant-man to really yeah. have a good time yeah. and this these posters these three posters really illustrate that mm-hmm. people were saying yeah. online i want to get your guys' take on this people were saying online oh it's really lame because they're just banking on the fact that the avengers are the most famous superheroes and like they mm-hmm. want people to go see this just because the Avengers and that Ant-Man might be a bad movie uh, so like sort of piggybacking kind of a deal like it just writing the coattails of Avengers no what is your guys' take on that now that's a valid opinion if no. people don't understand about Ant-Man right but what's your well, yeah. guys' take on that that's that's dumb do your homework <laughs> go and figure out that Ant-Man was one of the original Avengers he yeah. was there one of the founding members for a very very long even time if it wasn't, him. even if it wasn't Scott Lang correct the character right. Ant-Man himself the is a founding member of the Avengers in the comics Hank Pym and the Wasp and yeah. Hank Pym is going to be Michael Douglas in the new film mm-hmm. uh, but in right. this movie he's going to be older so the age you know the timeline is all a little bit different mm-hmm. uh, he's normally a contemporary of mm-hmm. Tony Stark mm-hmm. and Bruce Banner mm-hmm. and yeah. Reed Richards and he's blah 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 he's just as smart as all those guys and this character is going to show up in Captain America a Civil War, you know it's going to yeah. be filled with Avengers references yes. in this movie. Sure. There's rumors that we're going to see Avengers in this movie, so it's like now, you know. Yeah, I've got two takes. First of all, this is this is this is something that these movies have been doing since the beginning. If you remember, after Iron Man opened and was number one that weekend, mm-hmm. they created an Incredible Hulk trailer mm-hmm. or a commercial that featured Robert Downey Jr.'s cameo in it mm-hmm. to to give people incentive to go see Incredible right. Hulk a month yeah. later, right. two months later, when it came out in 08. And Wasn't it's that like, the uh, the after the credit scene with with Thunderbolt Ross? But it's not. But then they moved it up from after the credits. It was supposed to be to just right when the movie ends. It's <laughs> yeah, the right, last right, thing right, in the right, movie. Right, there's right, no right, after right, the right, credit right. because they wanted to give people incentive. Like there's crossover. There's mm-hmm. crossover. And if you don't appreciate superheroes crossing over, then you don't like superheroes because that's part of their deal in comics, Marvel or yeah. DC. Huge, part huge of what part makes of them awesome. I was, I was just rereading a comic book and I saw all these superheroes on one panel and I was like, oh, hello. There's so many superheroes awesome. on one panel. I was like, yeah. this is incredible, but we're never going to see this in a movie. Well, not anytime we'll, soon if, if we you will know, eventually. studios don't collaborate. We will eventually. Right. But secondly, I think that the marketing for this film has been brilliant. Yeah. And these posters are part of that. I don't know if there's like marketing awards. I think there are, but these guys should win a bunch of awards because it also suits the character so perfectly. He is, especially Scott Lang. Yeah. He is this like fringe humorous character who's never really, he's, excuse me, he's a reluctant hero. Yes. He doesn't want to be a part of it because it's against his moral fiber to do what the superheroes are doing. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a criminal, you know, and he watches out for himself and then 
he watches out for his daughter. Sorry, guys, I'm drinking beer. Um, <laughs> but like, it's per- it's perfect for his character, and and also the movie has a sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. And for them to use humor in these posters to be like, no shield, no armor, no problem. No problem. You know, and he's it's standing smart. up. Like, very it's very 90s. so smart. But it fits the character perfectly. Yeah. It's not like they're using these posters to like do Doctor Strange. They you know? look like, to me, honestly, they look like comic book covers. Yeah. You know? Yeah, dude. They're really, they they're really actually, do. You really are, well. That's a, that's a shrewd analogy. Very right there, shrewd. It's very. It's good. It's good, buddy. Shrewd and like lewd, my vocabulary? My yes. Excellent. Get off my trolley, please. Exquisite vocabulary. Ooh. <laughs> Hector, Ooh, down I am, boy. I am very aroused. Um, <laughs> so we got, we've got we got one more month till this movie's out. Wow. Yeah. Exactly one month from today. Yeah. Ant-Man is out in theaters. I can't wait. I'm really I'm super excited. excited. I can't wait. Really that last excited. trailer was so good that... I, I, yeah. I'm going to buy my ticket did you now. guys Did you guys see... You guys saw the uh, the fan-made poster? Can you bring that up, Adam? Can we have to bring it up. Can you really quick? You have to find the, the mm-hmm. fan-made uh, poster. Which He's one? There's also a really cool Russian version that of they Ant-Man? made. Man? Yeah, yeah I think Ant-Man. I saw that too. Specifically, the one I'm talking about is somebody is... put together a fan-made to follow in the series of No Armor, No Shield, No Problem, and it's Hawkeye. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. And it's, Ant-Man it's, is on top of the arrow. It's a bow and arrow of Hawkeye. What are these all? These are all. Fa- these are, this these, is the same guy who made all yeah. these. Bring, wow, there it is. Bring, bring that that's one in. amazing. That one in. Wow. What is that? Oh, these oh, was are that last awesome. one? Ultron, Falcon. No, Falcon, War Machine, War Machine, The Vision. Vision. <gasps> Dude, all right. see how easy it is, guys. <laughs> see how so so somebody made. Um, Let me see how quickly I can get these. Okay, yeah. so especially Hawkeye is the main one. Somebody went yeah, and made based off of this really fun theme. They just made posters for the rest of the Avengers mm-hmm. where Ant-Man is hanging out as a little tiny ant mm-hmm. in the rest of these posters. The Hulk one is great. You see the Hulk's fist clearly lifted from the Hulk's personal yes. Age of Ultron poster. Yes. Right. right. They're just close-ups on these characters and Ant-Man sitting on his fist and stuff. But I think the best one and the one that everyone's paying attention to oh, is Hawkeye. Oh, is this Hawkeye. one right here. Open that because one up. Open that one up. For a specific reason. Hang on Hawkeye, one sec. Clint, Clint Barton uh-huh. uh, <laughs> and, uh, and Ant-Man, Scott Lang, have done this, have performed this move, and it's a classic, famous comic book cover, mm-hmm. Avengers. And on the cover, they say, uh, somebody's going to get it. And then you see it's a close-up <laughs> of Ant-Man hanging on an arrow mm-hmm. as it's about to get shot by Hawkeye. Yeah. And they pulled it They pulled it off in the cartoon uh, from, um, uh, look at that. Look at this fan edit. Boom. This is beautiful. On Avengers, er, in oh, the cartoon so show, excited. Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, mm-hmm. they pulled it off. And mm-hmm. what's exciting is that the comic book features Ant-Man and Hawkeye, right? Yeah. But it's Scott Lang, Ant-Man and Hawkeye Clint Barton. Those mm-hmm. are the same versions of the characters in the movies right now. So mm-hmm. they could actually recreate this exact famous comic book panel. Look at that. We zoom out and we see it in uh, Captain America Civil War, which both of these actors and characters are in. Yep. So people are already being like, just give us that moment. It's yeah. such a huge fan That's, moment. I, we talked about this a long time ago with our other podcast that we had mm-hmm. for yeah. a while that we really wanted to see Ant-Man oh, fly on Hawkeye's arrow. It's, yeah. And it's going to happen. The most accurate shot in the world with a little, a little tiny guy? growing man on who's it. Gonna, oh, who's going to jump off on. and grow? That's it. That's oh, the poster. That's f- I don't awesome. know if you can pull that up. No, it's fine. You guys can Google search it. Yeah, <laughs> just Google search it. There's other Do cool your stuff homework. Out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Somebody's Anyways, going to get it. We have an Somebody email question that. coming in. All right. Today. Yeah, so we're going to jump into viewer questions. So if you guys want to submit some questions through the chat, do so now. Shane is moderating the chat room and he's going to pick some questions for us. Looks like yep. we've already got a couple. We yeah, do. But before we do that, we're going to address this email question. Yep. All right. Here we the go. The email says So after hearing all these rumors about Doomsday being in Batman versus Superman, I think putting Doomsday in the movie is a stupid idea because I think it is better to put Doomsday in the last Superman or Justice League movie because I would like to see Superman fight Doomsday and die at the end of the movie and would have a bigger impact on the audience and the heroes in the (laughs) DC universe. What do you think? So before we answer it, Uh we don't know for sure whether or not Doomsday is going to be in the movie. As as stated, it's a rumor. But with that being said, Hector, what do you think? Hmm. Totally super hard agree. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't want to see Doomsday unless it's in a movie called The Death of Superman or unless that happens. And people are saying, you know, why? Like, Doomsday, the character, he's fine. He's just a brute. He's just a blah, blah, blah. To me, he's not an interesting character. But what happened, what the story story. he's involved with is iconic and incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they were to just lift the character, that would be like if there was a Spider-Man movie without Venom, but they went straight to Carnage. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have a story that kind of mimicked Maximum Carnage, Mm -hmm. which was where, like, he took over the city and, you know, which is like you're wasting a not even interesting character 
character to begin with. Yeah, Spider-Man yeah. has great villains. Why would you go to Carnage just because he's a fan favorite, just because he's badass? Like, mm -hmm. no. If you're going to use Carnage, you use him once because he's a one-trick pony. Right. And you do a story similar to his, like, major story, Maximum yep. Carnage. You focus more on Venom. You focus more on all the other villains. So I would hate to see Doomsday as a villain pop up in this thing. As um, Now, in, in comics, long after the death of Superman, Doomsday would show up as, like, a creature, like a cloned creature. Mm -hmm. There were comics yeah. where Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman fought a whole little group group of doomsdays yeah and i that worries me because i'm like oh my god like they might do that in batman v superman yeah because these other characters them. are in it these other characters are in it and again mm -hmm. that's that's fine in the comics because we got to see the first initial story with doomsday the, 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 death of the superman. main story the main mm -hmm. story right. and it's it's yeah it's just so iconic it's i don't know I, i'm trying to think of other ways to like equate it to to me it's it's not about just the fight between Superman and Doomsday. Which to is, me, yeah, it's everything. Man. When, it's everything when after. Superman died, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember. It was on the news. Like yeah. this comic book was coming out is a huge, huge event. Superheroes did not die back in the day, and yeah. for yeah. Superman to die was a huge event. Absolutely. And it should be treated like that. People in the movie. who didn't read comic books are like, "Well, what happens now? Like, yeah. what yeah. do you do?" This cannot be yeah. treated lightly in the very first movie yeah. that we have going on. This this movie is meant to set up. This new sort of Zack Snyder-ish universe that we have for DC. Mm -hmm. And we can have Superman fight this sort of this monster that is doesn't... It, he's just a monster, but he represents so much more. He I represents the death of ideas absolutely. and like the absolutely. ultimate yeah. good boy. And exactly. Like what do we do after Superman's death? Yeah. You know, what I happens? I think I found an example. It would be like watching Bane in Batman and Robin who was wasted, mm -hmm. who was just a brute. Mr. Yeah. Bane, right? Do your line. What's <laughs> Mr. Mr. Oh. Freeze say? <laughs> What's Mr. Freeze say? <laughs> no matter what they tell you, Mr. Bane. It is the size of your gun that counts. <laughs> gun. And then you cut to when they used Bane appropriately was in The Dark Knight Rises because yeah. they adapted Nightfall. Yeah. Right. They adapted yep. the story that's like, that's Bane's big story. Yeah. He yeah. breaks the back. The story that matters. It wasn't exactly, but he still like broke Bruce Wayne's back. Exactly. He still blew up a bunch of Gotham. He mm -hmm. still, you know, you see that Bane and you're like, that's Bane, dude. Yes. And they, exactly. they did, and it, it, but more importantly than the character was the story that he was involved right. in. That's what they tried to adapt and what it meant for Batman and what mm -hmm. it meant for the character. Mm -hmm. so. I think the only thing that could possibly work is if they were to make us, you know, because I remember we, we always keep saying that the point of this movie should be for audiences to fall in love with Superman by the end of the movie. Exactly. And I think if that happens and they bring in a character like Doomsday and kill Superman, yeah. It would no. that's that's the way you could do it, but it's not I don't think it's right for this no. movie. I think you have to save it for a Man of Steel yeah. sequel yeah, or too. a Justice League movie. Because what's going to happen is if Bam, if uh, Doomsday shows up in this movie and they kill Superman, you know he's going to come back. I know. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having the character. Exactly. Have a Man of Steel doomsday maybe even one or two movies to explain the death and return of superman mm -hmm. if they decide mm -hmm. to go that route but mm -hmm. yeah to just have him thrown into batman versus superman i think it's poor choice Big i think waste. i think you focus on lex Luthor and how he interacts with all these characters and what kind of his role is in this universe agreed yeah i completely agree 100 yeah. percent. people keep downplaying doomsday it's not about Doomsday, you guys. No, it's, it's about the it's impact really that not, the story no. has. Exactly. It's, it's about it's, how the world is affected by Superman's death. Exactly. How, are the, how is the rest of the Justice League affected by it? You exactly. Know, it's, that's the point of yep. the death of Superman. And we still yeah. have Justice League movies to go. Exactly. We cannot have the Trinity absent. Yeah. We can't have Batman and Wonder Woman running this thing. You know, it's yeah. it's not going to make sense for the, right. for the Justice League movie. This right. will only be so, the second movie in the DCU. We have yeah. time to develop all those things. Yeah. So. We will have anyway. to wait and see what happens, but I got, I got all puffy on that one. Like, yeah, I, got, I don't think I don't think people just think of they just think of Doomsday like oh yeah he can trade blow for blows with Superman. It just frustrates me that they don't think about the yeah because that's not the know? point of it. It's not the point. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's take some viewer questions. The first one we got is from Corey Hickson. Any E three superhero news? So unfortunately, we weren't able to attend as superhero news. No. Hector yeah. is there on behalf of Legendary Geek and, Geek and Sundry. Sundry. Geek and Sundry. Yeah. So, but as far as what I've been watching, there's not too much superhero news out of E3. There's some Batman no. stuff, but yeah. it's been pretty minimal mostly. I don't know. What do you it's think? Basically, it, the main superhero presence at E3 is uh, Batman Arkham Knight, yes. right, which is playable. I haven't had a chance See to See you on it. Tuesday, sweetheart. Uh, Name, you played it, right? You said yeah. you played it? Okay, without giving us a spoiler, like you said to me out, out there, what's your little review on it? Can I curse or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah go for it. Yeah. You want. It's fucking awesome. 
<laughs> Quote, fucking awesome. Know, fucking awesome. So there's some news. And then also the only other real Marvel presence is uh, Lego Avengers, I think, mm-hmm. is the game that's yeah. on the floor, yeah. which is like yeah. every other Lego game, which is either you love them or you're like, they're not for me. Yeah, uh, they're, they're not for me. They're adorable. Yeah. They're funny. It's yeah. like, it's yeah. fine. But, yeah, I mean, um, it's a very minimal superhero presence. Yeah. I yeah. think for us, our big thing is going to be Comic-Con, which is coming up in just a couple Ooh. weeks. So. Ay, 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 ay. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. The Jinx, is ask, uh, the Jinx one is asking, what do you think? What do you think the role of Wonder Woman will... What do you think she'll play in Batman vs. Superman? I honestly yeah. think she's... And I'm basing this, honestly, a lot of it is just based on like the way I visualize the credits in the movie. Because when they release the billing for the movie, Gal Gadot is listed like last in the in the billing. Yeah. Mm. So you know that her role is going to be very, very minimal. Are I think she's only after the credit scene? I don't think after the credit no, scene. I think no. she'll be interplayed into the story, but I think okay. her, it's going to be small, very small. They're going to save her for Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I think they're not going to show her. T- I don't think she's going to have anything to do with their personal quarrel. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she might come in sort of... Of maybe a mysterious force saves the day. They see her for a little bit. Maybe they chat, and then boom, she's gone. Yeah, yeah. She's not supposed to really interact with the world, and she's supposed to be on her mm. own island. So her being there, it's probably going to be really quick. Yeah. I honestly have no idea. It's really tough. Like I'm trying to think of an example. Maybe like Black Widow and Iron Man too, but she had a pretty large role. She did. Yeah. She was she really was definitely shoehorned supporting in there. character. Supporting character. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, and even that would kind of bug me. And I don't really want to talk about it, guys, because it's like <laughs> anytime I think about Wonder Woman being in this movie, I'm upset that she's not getting her own movie first. I'm upset that that groundwork isn't being laid out. Yeah. Uh, like but I want. I, like but I, I do want... also think that it is in their favor, or you know, it's going to benefit that movie sure. to have her set up. At least introduce it in some capacity in Batman yeah. versus Superman. It's like I'm saying all this, movie. and like, but I still want to see Wonder Woman as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. So I want to see her in this movie. I want to see her fully armored up. But then I'm like, but do I want that, or do I just want her as like Diana Prince? You know, I don't know. Like I'm, uh, I'm heartbroken. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> I, don't, I, I honestly have no idea. That's a really good question. Really tough. It is a good question. You stump though. me, yeah. internet. Yeah. You can pick. I know Hector. He hasn't been stumped wow. in a long time. I usually have ideas for like everything. Stump a source, Rex. But over when here. you tell me Batman v Superman, which is adapting to Dark Knight Returns, I'm like, yes, yes, yeah. yes, and then. And you're like, and Wonder Woman and Aquaman's gonna be in it. I'm like, how? What? How? Yeah, exactly. How? Uh, there's still, yeah, there's still the, we still have to figure out the conflict and then bring in two other characters plus, plus uh, Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor, his villain maybe, and then plus let's uh, not forget Diane Lane, my babe. She's the hottest. <laughs> Martha Kent, Ma Kent, <laughs> Mama Kent. Talking about Mama What's Kent, up, Mama. Yeah, Mama there's like. so many <laughs> characters in here that it's yeah. gonna be really tough to make a coherent Larry Fishburne. Story. Yeah. It's, right. it's tough, Perry you guys. White. Yeah, I, I want to answer this one by Ice Hulk yeah, because sure. Ice Hulk's a buddy. Ice Hulk. Uh, do you think Warlock will be in Guardians Two? Gunn said there'd be a new member of the team. Uh, he hinted at the past film Warlock would be cool. I agree. Reading the Infinity Gauntlet, yeah. Warlock is it's like key. Key. <laughs> he needs to be yeah. there. Yeah. And if they don't, it's going to be a really hard sell. Yeah. Uh, Adam Warlock is pretty much the person who orchestrates the downfall of Thanos. Sure. Adam Warlock, he is a character. If you're not familiar with Adam Warlock, he is a character. He's he's a human, but he was uh, bound with, I think it was the Soul Gem. Correct, yeah. Not sure which one. but So with Thanos wearing one of the gems, Adam Warlock is part of that, so he can infiltrate the gem Well, let me say this. Wants. Let me say this. You know who is now part of a gem in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? The Vision. 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 Exactly. And that's the soul gem. Right, right. Oh, no, no, no. It's the mind gem. No, he, no yeah, he has the mind gem. Mind because gem. The mind know, gem. So, so I, don't, I don't Do you think Vision know. might take? Because Vision was like inconsequential in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline yes. in the comics. Like Vision he wasn't even there. got knocked out like that. Exactly. So like Iron Man got be... his head ripped off. Cyclops yeah. died. Oh, yeah. Spoiler uh, alert, guys. Everybody dies. <laughs> Thor's it's dead. Awesome. The universe goes to shit. It's awesome. Hulk and... God, and, I love that and, comic. And uh, what's his name? Um, Drax. Drax the Destroyer are really the only ones who make it. I mean, listen... There's other characters who make it. I'm I, just well, yeah, like, I, I don't want to spoil Don't spoil the whole though. thing. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. You, know, you got to read the comic. There's uh, so much that happens here that Adam Warlock has to be. And then they hinted at his cocoon in Guardians. Yep. Adam Warlock, if you don't know about in him, the collector's he cocoon. kind of uh, it kind of hibernates in a cocoon. Yeah. Uh, before so weird. he comes out, which is yeah, cosmic very cocoon. Strange. He's very powerful. He's very like um, uh, almost like the Silver Surfer, like philosophical and kind of ethereal. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, he's always in touch with the cosmic universe. I think that even if they did something like introduce him, maybe even as a tease in Guardians 2, but in Avengers Infinity War, he shows up full bore 
and yeah. somebody's familiar yeah. with him. Yeah. Maybe Doctor Strange has met him in the past. He Maybe, will be. Right? Yeah. So, but, like, but, but just like in Infinity Gauntlet, having reading that storyline, that comic book, if you go buy that trade paperback, and never having read any other Adam mm-hmm. Warlock story, mm-hmm. when he shows up, everyone's like, oh, Adam Warlock. And they fill you in on what his deal is. And they're like, really you were quick. dead. He's like, I know, yeah. but I'm back. Like, it's just like, <laughs> like he, has yeah. a, he has a prior relationship with a couple of characters. So you're yeah. like, oh, shit. And then he teams up with Doctor Doom. And people yep. are like, what? Mm-hmm. And Doctor Doom's like, shut up. And it's <laughs> awesome. He's like, I'm going to try to, oh, I'm dead. Comics yeah, are great. I know this character's been talked about time and yeah. time and time again, yeah. and everyone's been asking, you know, is Adam Warlock going to be in it? Is he going to be connected to Peter Quill in any way? Is he going to be his father? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I know there's been a couple of times that James Gunn has said it's not going to be Adam Warlock, it's right. not going to be Adam but... I mean, he could be they just pulling a sham us. on us. They yeah, liked exactly. It before. They like to mess with us. Exactly. Especially because they don't have, because Marvel doesn't have every single character. The rights to uh, it. The rights yeah. to it. And we're going to be missing uh, Doctor Doom, who's kind of important. Silver Surfer, especially. <clears throat> yeah, Silver Surfer a was an element. interesting character. Yeah. Yeah. Key, key character. Yeah. So we don't have Silver Surfer. I feel like Adam Warlock could kind of take the place of a Silver Surfer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If that kind of gives you an idea of how he works. Um, Silver Surfer was also very, like, you know, uh, from space and Jesus, God, the right? beer I'm fine it's Jesus the beer that I'm Christ drinking Hector. are you professional or what yes. come on next question next question um, shit okay uh, <laughs> what does that say Bra- brain man brand man what are your brand what man. are your hopes for the flash movie excellent question oh that is excellent a good question. question I want to get your take, guys' take on that um, go, oh, for go for it, it. No, go okay. for it I don't really have as someone <laughs> as someone who watches the flash TV show I think they're gonna have they have a lot of expectations to me because the flash show what it did so well is it took the character Barry Allen who we've kind of said in the past is a little boring mm-hmm. and really infused him with that Spider-Man personality that energy really really fun character really fun story they took the origin and kind of twisted it around a little bit and used elements from different comics mm-hmm. and we're able to take certain villains that like I I didn't know much about the reverse flash. Mm-hmm. But by the end of the season, you love and yeah. hate that character at the same time. Yeah. So I, I think the sh- I think the show really set up or at least set a really big bar for for where they need to go with this movie. And the movie needs to obviously go above and beyond that. Mm-hmm. So I'm super excited about it because I love Lord and Miller. I think they're gonna do a great job developing that movie. Mm-hmm. I also am a little apprehensive because yeah. You know, the show is already so good. They're going to have to do something really, really spectacular with this movie. But I'm still looking forward to it because we've never had a Flash movie on the big screen. It's about Mm -hmm. damn time. He's 75 years old. Let's do it. Well, Jake Garrick is 75 years old. but The Flash (laughs) character. The idea of the Flash. The character Uh, is 75 years old. The question is, should it be Barry or Wally? I'm going to say start at the beginning with Barry Allen. Okay. And then transition. Wally. Wally all day. Uh, I'm going to, I feel like you could go either way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like now, especially after a Green Lantern movie starring Hal Jordan, the next Green Lantern anything needs to be John Stewart. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, it mm-hmm. needs to be. Yeah. Hal's had his time in the hot sun, and now it's <laughs> John Stewart's day. Uh, but uh, for Flash, like I feel like it could like either argument I could see. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm most excited about like, special effects that are not CW TV special effects. Yeah. Like, yeah. No matter how fun the CW show is, and there's great special effects in it, you couldn't do stuff from ten years ago. Yeah. Right. It's miles and miles above Smallville. Yeah. It's still like I can't wait to see an incredible slow mo. Flash, cinematic, like oh, that's gonna look awesome. Do you think Quicksilver has taken that away though? No, I don't no. think so. Because, I think I think yeah. they did something really cool with Quicksilver, and I think they're gonna look at it and be like, okay, well, we can do some cool sure. stuff too. Mm-hmm. Because you know? Flash, okay, so Quicksilver in the X Men movie was great, but it was a lot of that sort of slow motion stuff, uh, and a lot of used for humor, where like yeah. he's moving a gun and like right, right, per- pu- pu- putting person's fist like this, and then yeah. follows through. Yeah. And then Quicksilver in, in Avengers was just very blurry. Right. Yeah. And I feel like Flash has a couple of things uh, visually that he can uh, lean on. He's got the slow motion thing, especially because Barry Allen's origin. He discovered he had super speed when he was at a diner and somebody dropped a plate and everything yeah. just froze, and he was like. You know, so I want to see some stuff like that. They yeah. them go full on with it. On top of Flash, when he runs, he's got that red and yellow electricity blur. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the electricity, like mm-hmm. that could do look fun stuff with that. So cool. You know what? So, I, I would uh, I would like to see. I know they did this in the Justice League cartoon, but sort of towards the end when they're yeah. beating Brainiac and Brainiac yeah. is like almost dead, he literally runs around the world and punches. Yeah. He punches Bra- uh, Brainiac <laughs> several times. He just keeps yeah. running around the world, so good. knocking him in the face. That would be really cool to see. Yeah, yeah. super stuff like that cool would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, he's got to go. Epic. He runs so fast that he knocks him out. And yeah, just, oh, yeah, so good. Got to go epic. So with good. It. Uh, okay, do we have time for more questions? Uh, Charlie yeah, Zenith, yeah, Dark Side. Is it possible in s- at some point? Yeah, Dark Side. Yeah. 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 Of course, that's Ju- the end Justice game. Justice League, yeah. man. Listen, mm-hmm. Thanos is the end game for right now at Marvel. Yeah. Dark Side's the same thing. Yeah, they're like interchangeable characters, Thanos and Dark Side. Yeah, they're so. pretty much. The same but wasn't thing Thanos? Now. Was it Thanos that was based off of Dark Side? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanos yeah. was first. And, yeah. uh, uh, oh, no, Thanos sorry. Was, 
No, no, no. Dark Side was first. first. Yeah. Yeah, Thanos yeah, yeah. was like a pretty clear ripoff of Dark Side. Right. But it's fine. Both companies have ripped each other off a bunch of different mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. They're pretty so, much, yeah. The Ninja Turtles ripped off Daredevil, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see Dark Side, though. Dark yeah. Side. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, yeah. He was the first one. I knew Dark Side before I knew Thanos, and he was the Same. first yeah. one to introduce me to that super smart and equally yes. as powerful villain. Yes. You know? And then I love the way his rays shoot out. They go yeah. like kind the of crazy Omega directions. Mm-hmm. And like, Man, when he killed yeah, when really he killed cool. Detective Dan Turpin in Superman mm-hmm. the Animated Series, and it was dedicated that episode was dedicated to Jack Kirby because he just passed away. Mm. I was like, mm. like he's <laughs> Dark Side's amazing. And when he was voiced by Michael Ironside, that oh, great yeah. Michael Ironside, yeah, Michael Kal-El, Ironside, the Kryptonian yeah. Superman. It's awesome. Yeah, he's great. But I don't want him to be twenty feet tall. I don't like the new no. fifty two version of Dark Side, yeah. where if if Dark Side's this big, Superman is this big. Yeah. Like, Meh, Dark no. I don't like make that. It, make I like him six, be, seven feet yeah. tall. Most. Yeah, make it like, like, oh, like not even as tall as Hulk. Like a little bit shorter than Hulk, so mm. like he can, you know, look down on Superman. But they're still like, we can both fit in a car. I don't know. <laughs> just like we can both right? fit in a Honda Civic. Yes. If we have to fight in a Honda Civic, I will fight you, Superman. So no smart car. No. <laughs> Honda he's too Civic. Big. He's too Honda big Civic, for a bro. smart car. <laughs> he's too big. So we have a question from Bob Bob Hyland. So Sony's making Image Comics Harbinger and Bloodshot. Is there any other Image Comics that you would like to see get in the cinematic universe? I mean, mm. they're making a lot of com. Oof. They're making a lot of comic movie adaptations of the Image Comics, but Wait, the only ones that's they're incorrect. doing. That's not Image. That's Valiant. Or Harbinger, Valiant. Yeah, Harbinger Valiant. Harbinger and Bloodshot is all Valiant. Valiant, mm-hmm. sorry. To kind of answer your question, Bob. Like all the Valiant comics, I say make them all movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're all yeah. in one shared universe, which is awesome. But yeah. then to also answer your other question, is there any image comics you want to see be made into movies? Images, stuff like Walking Dead, mm-hmm. uh, Invincible, mm-hmm. Savage Dragon, Spawn, classic stuff like mm-hmm. that. My number one pick would be Invincible. It's my favorite comic book series of all time. It's of written by time. Robert Kirkman, uh, who is the creator of The Walking Dead. And it does for superheroes what he does for zombies. And it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And, I, and it could be a show, but it's so big budget and epic that it, I want it to be a movie like trilogy. Yeah. Um, so that's what I would make. So, But that, but you're confusing like, is there any other Valiant comics that you like? Yeah, all the rest of them. Because I'm not familiar with Because it. Sony has a five picture deal <laughs> yeah. with yeah. Valiant. Yeah. So... I mean, they have so many movies that they can make, and they're going to make the Harbinger War. So there's so many characters and storylines that they yeah. can mine from. So you're going to mm-hmm. see that. But in terms of image, I would love to see a Spawn Netflix show. Oh, dude! After Daredevil, there, buddy. hell yeah! You took hell it there. yeah! That's but, that's brilliant. The, the only thing that would deter me from that is that it's so VFX heavy. Do you think they could they could pay homage oh, to, yeah. what, to what Spawn so. does? I because so. it's VFX heavy, but. It's also like atmosphere heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Spawn true. is all that's in true. the shadows. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think we we're only thinking it's VFX heavy because of the movie. We're like, look at the cape. Look at yeah. all the effects in the cape. Well, I mean, but look at all the covers that he has. His cape is just sure. doing crazy yeah. sure. things. That's and, true. You know. But I'm sure they could do it for a. Because if you look at how much budget that movie must have spent in 1986 or 97, yeah. whenever it was made, they could probably do that for that price. Sure. Back for then like now. a season. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and an episode would probably be like 30 minutes of like detectives being like, hey, look at this chod body. <laughs> and then it's like five minutes of Spawn showing up and doing a cool exactly. thing. Look at this guy. Exactly. So yeah, get a load of this. Who knows? I, I mean, I don't. I think they're doing a kick ass job with Walking Dead right now. So for I sure. Just, I'm okay sure. with them not bringing the heat. Uh, maybe after this Marvel Cinematic Universe, maybe, you know, when the next phase starts, maybe mm-hmm. they could bring some other cool so stuff. So question on. from Eric Garcia. Do you guys think, talking about Darkseid and, and the, Just, the Justice League films, do you guys think that Brainiac would be worthy of a two-part Justice League movie? I will answer first, no. <laughs> I will Uh-oh. say, you know what would be worthy of a two-part Justice League movie? The Legion of Doom. Yeah. That's Brainiac teaming up with yeah. Lex Luthor, teaming up with Gorilla Grodd, teaming up with Sinestro, Solomon Grundy, the classic Super Friends I think lineup. I has got to be more than two Ooh, movies, No, dude. two movies. You could do two movies. Really? You adapt that's a, a lot of people. You, you could adapt a storyline similar to like uh, Alex Ross's Justice that he did, which if you haven't uh, read, yeah. is awesome. And it's basically yeah. Super Friends oh, versus Legion, Lex right? so good. Uh, <laughs> and, and for, but if it's a solo Brainiac thing, I say leave him for a Superman film. Yeah. Because Brainiac would be awesome for a Superman movie. Yeah. Um, I would yeah. have been more okay with, with Brainiac being maybe in Batman versus Superman instead of Doomsday as like right. a setup or a lead into yep. Justice yep. League yep. and other scenarios, but... Because you yeah. can't kill Brainiac. You know he's going to come back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He and that's, and that's always the, the one thing about Brainiac too is all the iterations of Brainiac that I've seen, he's been intertwined kind of into Superman history and how he got to yeah. earth and all that stuff yeah. and they never ever do that in the I movies know. i, I wish they yeah. would superman the animated series brilliant the way the best that, that show starts best and he's a part of krypton he's jor mm-hmm. creation mm-hmm. on krypton he's, he travels he's the reason 
Krypton explodes. Exactly. He's the he's the reason that Krypton that all the Kryptonians die. Yeah. Because Jarell has the evidence, and he's the uh, the smart like they just turned to Brainiac for everything, and so mm-hmm. he decides like like Jarell is incorrect. You're fine. Yeah. And he lets all the Kryptonians die. Why? Because his whole thing is he wanted to collect data, go off of the planet, and then keep like the collector in Marvel yep. Universe mm-hmm. just collect Mining data, data mm-hmm. whether it's the Bottle City of Kandor mm-hmm. or like so he wants to get data and then destroy the data so that there's no new data means yeah. it means he wipes out planets, exactly. which is awesome. That's which I awesome. don't understand yeah. why the hell. They still haven't done that in the movies. <laughs> I ah, hire us. I really want to answer this one because we've yeah. gotten it a lot. What big villain do you guys want to see after Thanos? Yeah, good question. That's oh, a very man. good question. It was very, very tough, and I was doing a little bit of research after it. Just, just Marvel storylines. Yeah. And there's not a lot of like good story. Well, I mean, there are good storylines, but big story arcs. I think they might have to break off into more individual style movies rather mm-hmm. than have giant story arcs again. Mm-hmm. Uh, another story arc they could do maybe would last one or two movies is House of M. And then maybe even Secret Wars. In Secret Wars, they use the they use the uh, Infinity Gauntlet, but it, it is it's destroyed right away. Mm. So there's mm-hmm. those are my two options, two possibilities. But yeah, it's they not wouldn't so much, be as big as what it is now. It's not right. so much villains because Thanos, I think, uh, is a villain. You know what he means, but he also is tied in with the Infinity Gauntlet event. Exactly. So like when we say Thanos, we're really also talking about that event. Yeah. And Marvel operates really well with its like milestone events. Yeah. As the years go by, yeah. Civil War is one of them. Mm-hmm. World War Hulk, House of M, mm-hmm. Secret Invasion with the Scrolls, mm-hmm. uh, Dark Reign, where all the bad guys take over. Mm-hmm. So like, it's not so much about like one big bad, but it's like what would be what what should the event be that like this phase is kind of lead up to right exactly, right? That's exactly. A, that's exactly and then kind of loosely feel. adapt one of those events for like a big avengers movie that's yeah. what those events are they're big summer blockbuster movies when you read them the comics because mm-hmm. it's a bunch of different characters and they're all fighting you know x-men versus avengers is an event um yeah, yeah. so i don't know what necessarily i have ideas for other stuff that they could do to kind of in the cool down after infinity war i would like to do something like runaways which is the mm-hmm. the superhero team of a bunch of teenagers running away from their parents which mm-hmm. they find out are super villains and they're based in la on the west coast it's like a completely different flavor for the marvel universe right yeah. i'd like to see a howard the duck movie like i'd like you know like <laughs> no, that kind of stuff no just fla- you just cannot be flavors. serious about yeah, howard serious. the duck and you know what's funny is that i don't you i can... just don't get the howard the duck thing Bro, sorry it's, i've seen it's, it i don't like it's, it it's all about sense of humor but if they inject enough heart in it like we'll all buy it. Would you wa- there would you was watch- duck porn in it. Would you watch Bro. Rocket Raccoon? That's true. Movie? That's true. See, with Groot. A rocket. No, and Groot? but they they already messed up with like the duck porn. I'm sorry, I can't yeah. get over that part what where she it? sleeps with no, the no duck. One's, oh, no in the really in Howard the Duck movie. Yeah. Uh, yes. no, we, don't, no. we don't talk about that's that. That's not a real Howard. Okay, the we don't duck talk movie. about that. We don't talk about that. No, no, that's no, no. what bugs me. That's all I remember from that movie. Man, exactly. That's, that's why you're messed up, dude. Exactly. Yeah, that's sense. why I don't that's want why to why you're see messed any up, more dude. Howard the Duck. That's why you're messed up, dude. Ugh. All I'm saying is different flavors in terms of like what other big Marvel events they can go towards. I really, really liked Secret Invasion, but they can't do that because they don't have the rights to the scrolls. Exactly. Which are at 20th Century Fox. Exactly. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like Secret Wars, the original Secret Wars, I don't think you could do as a movie, but like mm. this new event is really interesting, but yeah, it also yeah. uh, relies heavily on Doctor Doom, which they don't have. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. But uh, but dude, even so, even with something to go back to Howard the Duck for a second. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but like you it's could even stupid. set up you could even set up it's characters so like um, like the, he interacts with Doctor Strange because he sometimes he operates in the mystical side or Man Thing. He's teamed up with Man Thing a lot in the past and like uh, like it's just all about kind of different flavors. No. Um no, oh, Hector. Man. Hector, what you can else? sell anything to anybody, but you can't sell me Howard the Duck. All right, That's well, fine. let's take our useful. last last question. Okay. All right. Um, from Blood Ocean 07, will we see Carrie Kelly as Robin in Batman versus Superman? Have we answered this already? No, uh, not today. I think we've... Oh, not, not today? Not, All right, go ahead. Not today. Not today, so we're answering it now. Um, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't so. Think so. I, think it, I think there's a definitely a possibility to see Carrie Kelly without not being Robin operating maybe in Gotham City and a little cameo but mm-hmm. post Robin like yeah she's you are Carrie. not yeah. I, I don't think you're gonna see any sidekicks no no Batman or sorry no Robin no Batgirl it's yeah. gonna be focused primarily Batman and Superman mm-hmm. we may see mm-hmm. flashbacks of some kind if they're re- if they're referencing other Robins or mm-hmm. storylines mm-hmm. but okay. I think Batman versus Superman is what the movie's really gonna focus on yeah it should at least I completely agree and I understand so. where this is coming from she was awesome. In uh, uh, you know being super, or sorry, being Batman's sidekick, obviously mm-hmm. she played a major role. But at this point, like you said, Adam, we have to focus on Batman and Superman. Yes, has to be that. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, I that's the first time he was speechless. I know, that's the first time Hector has not. No, said I got anything. stumped earlier with uh, I forgot what the question oh, was already, right, huh? but um, I totally got stumped. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Oh yeah, Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. I don't know. So also before yeah, I, before we go, uh, I made a little boo boo last week. I said I was going to be on the Schmoes note. 
podcast July 12th. Oh, it is actually Thursday, July 2nd. The Thursday right wow. before Comic-Con. We are still also figuring out what we're going to be doing for Comic-Con. So as we find out more stuff, we'll keep you guys updated. But in the yep. meantime, you guys can find us on the interwebs. Facebook.com slash Superhero News com, Twitter at Superhero News CB, and of course, all the latest news on our wonderful website run by Chris Bagley, Superhero News dot com. Chris, thanks, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye. We will see you next week. Bye.